My name is Konstantin Knizhnik. I worked for Digital Equipment, Together Soft, Borland, SciDB. Now I'm a freelancer, and uh, IMCS is my first contribution for Postgres SQL. As far as I understand, yesterday, uh, not everybody are familiar with uh, columnar storage. <coughs> Most of databases are storing data horizontally. So each attribute, attributes of each records are stored together, which makes it possible to fetch record using just one read operation, which is optimal for most queries. But uh, for ALAP queries, uh, ALAP queries used to mm, traverse, proceed to a very large number of records, but uh, usually they need only some subset of columns. For example, they are calculating, uh, they are calculating uh, average close price. Uh, vertical data representation allows uh, to fetch only uh, those columns which are actually needed for execution of query. Uh, but it is uh, not the only advantage. Uh, Actually, vector representation data is stored just as an array, and we can uh, manipulate with this data as with arrays. SQL uh, compiler uh, compile a query into some internal representation, which then interpreted by SQL engine. Uh, SQL engine has to perform each operation for each attribute of each record. And it certainly um, produces a lot of uh, significant uh, interpretation overhead. There are two ways of uh, solving this problem. We can generate native code, uh, but as it was done for, for example, for DB2, uh, but it is not portable and uh, very complex approach. Uh, vector operations is another approach. Um, we perform operation not just for a single value, but for a set of values. In this case, interpretation cost can be significantly reduced. Also, modern processors uh, provide SIM SIMD instructions, which uh, helps to perform vector operation even faster. Fortunately, it is not necessary to use some interesting function or functions or write some uh, assembler code to use SIMD instructions. Uh, modern compiler, compilers like, like GCC are able to emit SIMD instructions just for plain C code. For example, if I read the uh, right loop which uh, adds components of two vectors, then uh, GCC will generate PADD instruction from MMX instruction set. And last uh, advantage of vertical model is the compression of data. Certainly, compression can be also done for horizontal representation. But um, compression is based on uh, redundancy and uh, irregularities in uh, input data. And if we deal with each attribute independently, then we can uh, reach much better compression rate. Even such simple, uh, simple algorithm like early run length encoding uh, allows uh, to significantly reduce uh, memory footprint, especially if there are a lot of uh, duplicate values. Uh, Postgres has a classical uh, architecture for relational database system, and it is optimized for OLTP queries can execute a large number of uh, queries concurrently. But if we need to execute just single but very complex query, then uh, Postgres is not able to run it in parallel. Also, Postgres uh, use MVCC model, which uh, requires uh, a uh, significant uh, per record overhead, space overhead. It's about 24 bytes. Uh, if we deal with time series, in some cases, the uh, size of time series element of, is uh, small enough. It's uh, 
dozen of bytes. So in this case, this per record space overhead is comparable with the size of element itself. So storage is used very inefficiently. Uh, Postgres as a classical database system has to spend a lot of time in page management, locking, and uh, transaction processing, which are not always uh, needed for analytic queries. So all this, um, based on these ideas, uh, I'm decided to implement IMCS extension for Postgres. Um, first of all, it is not an uh, alternative way of storing data. So data, main storage of data, data is still stored in Postgres. IMCS just create uh, in-memory copy of this data. So it has not to deal with uh, redundancy, consistency. It is provided by Postgres. Um, it is, uh, memory is very cheap now, so it's not, uh, Computer with the terabyte of memory is not something very exotic, so we can load quite large sets of data and uh, manipulate them in memory without paying significant disk I.O. overhead. Uh, also, IMCS provide parallel, proce uh, parallel processing of uh, some operations, mostly aggregation, uh, filtering, uh, sorting can be done in parallel. Uh, IMCS use early compression and uh, some other techniques, compression techniques, which helps to reduce uh, memory footprint. And IMCS is standard Postgres extension, so it is no, no need to change Postgres uh, core to use this functionality. Um, IMCS is keeping its data in Postgres uh, shared memory, as well as uh, Postgres internal shared buffers and valve buffers. The main data construction used by MCS for storing time series data is B3. Uh, the queue of B3 is uh, either timestamp, either element position in uh, time series. Time series can have uh, identifiers, and uh, hash table uh, hash table is uh, use, uh, is used to locate time series by this identifier. And dictionary is used uh, about dictionary. I will tell later. Uh, IMCS is uh, constructing pipeline of operators. Uh, data internal results are never materialized in memory. Um, uh, at each, uh, each operator is producing some, uh, I call it tile, or, or maybe can we, call, we can call it a vector, some set of values which is uh, transferred to the next uh, level of the pipeline. Uh, size of the tile should be chosen uh, to be large enough to reduce interpretation uh, cost. But um, mm, it shouldn't be very large to efficiently utilize CPU cache. Right now, default value is 128 bytes. Certainly, it is uh, much smaller than size of modern processing caches, but uh, please take into account that uh, uh, more than one tile can be proceeded uh, at the same time, and the more complex queries, uh, the more tiles you need to access at the same time. Uh, most of IMCS uh, operators are um, taken time series and uh, returning also time series. <coughs> Exception is uh, are aggregates, which returns um, scalar value. Uh, few words about uh, parallel execution. Uh, input, uh, IMCS has a thread of pools, uh, pool of threads. Uh, 
uh, number of threads can be either explicitly specified or automatically chosen based on number of cores in the system. Input data is split into equal size intervals. The number of intervals is the same as number of threads. Each interval is uh, individually preceded by each thread, and uh, partial results are produced. Uh, then, uh, these partial results are combined, uh, combined to produce the final result. So operators which can be executed in parallel should implement prepare method, which do first stage, and uh, should implement combined method, which uh, merge partial result. Uh, how IMCS is, is used? So first step is trivial, is obvious. We just create IMCS extension. Uh, second step uh, is uh, more interesting. CS create function is generating special uh, functions in uh, Paris Square and the special types which can be used to access column story. I will uh, explain this in more details. Uh, first parameter is table name. It's just a normal table, uh, normal Postgres table. And second and third parameters are names of attributes in this table. Uh, time series should have a timestamp attribute. Data is uh, ordered by this timestamp, so timestamp can be considered as primary key. Uh, but it uh, has not to be unique. Uh, and optional uh, third argument specifies uh, time series identifier. For example, for quote, quote, we can use symbol name like IBM as identifier of time series. If time series identifier is not specified, then all data from the table is placed in the single time series. Uh, Return back. Once we create, <coughs> once we generate functions and types, or oh, I forgot to say it, uh, for quarter table, this function ge ge generate quarter underscore time series type. This uh, type has the same at, uh, attributes with the same name as uh, quote table, but type of these attributes is uh, time series. Uh, once we complete, uh, once functions are generated, we can import data. Import can be done explicitly using generated load method. It can be done implicitly when uh, data is first accessed and uh, IMCS understands that uh, columnar store is empty. Data is, uh, can be also incrementally added to columnar store using triggers when uh, data is uh, placed in Postgres. Um, Quote get is uh, one of the main generated function. It returns uh, instance of uh, Quote time series type. As I already said, attributes of, uh, of this type has uh, time series type. And ABB is identifier of time series. Uh, so actually, this uh, function return complex type with uh, which encapsulate time series. And IMCS functions are manipulated with this uh, time series. This is standard SQL query. And this is its IMCS analog which doing the same things. <coughs> Most of IMCS square uh, operators are taken time series as input and producing time series as output. So we have vertical representation through all the query execution plan. But sometimes it is ne uh, more convenient to convert it back to horizontal form represented as set of tuples as normal Postgres table. It can be done using project uh, function. 
So this uh, query takes position of uh, top t of a 10 time series element with uh, maximal close price. Then we extract uh, elements uh, at these positions from all other time series and uh, construct tuples with uh, correspondent elements. The output is uh, just a normal Postgres uh, table, which can be used uh, for any other subqueries. Postgres, as Postgres uh, makes it possible to define uh, user-defined operators. This feature is widely used by IMCS to make uh, operations with uh, time series looks like normal SQL expressions. Uh, here, close, high, low are time, all time series. And uh, greater than, minus, divide are operators for time series. As you can see, it looks like normal SQL expression. Uh, this is uh, yet another example. It's uh, aggregation. It calculates so-called uh, volume-adjusted price. Uh, this is a concatenation operator which uh, concatenates elements of two time series, and uh, it is used as uh, group by uh, key. So these operators are more uh, are similar with the correspondent uh, SQL standard operators, but uh, IMCS also provides some uh, special operators which are widely used in, for example, in financial sphere. Uh, for example, uh, this is example of calculating volume weighted average price. This is how it can be calculated in uh, standard SQL, and the IMCS has just a uh, special operator for it. Few words about early. The idea of early is trivial. We replace a sequence of value of the same values with just one value, which is called payload, and counter how much times this value is repeated. Uh, early encoding uh, helps not only to reduce space used by data, but also <coughs> makes uh, increased speed of uh, query execution. For example, if we multiply time series at some other time series, and we have uh, 100 same values, we do not need to repeat multiplication 100 times. We can do it only once and uh, use 100 counter for the result. So this uh, query, in this case, query can be executed 10 times faster, uh, 100 times faster. Yet another optimization uh, done by IMCS. It was motivated by real use case. Uh, there was an um, application which uh, collecting information from mobile device. This information includes name of operating system, uh, name of device, uh, provider name. Uh, number of uh, different values is not very large. It's from 100 till uh, 1,000. But uh, each identifier is large enough. This is just short forms. Uh, the real identifiers are much larger. So if we store them directly, it will take a lot of space. Uh, IMCS makes it possible to implicitly map these strings to integers. It contains dictionary. And when data is loaded in IMCS storage, uh, these strings are replaced with unique integer codes. Uh, Depending on size of the dictionary, if it is less than 64 kilobytes, then integer code is uh, two bytes, has size two bytes, otherwise it has size four bytes. And uh, later in the query, we can manipulate with these, uh, with these integers instead of strings. For example, if we're comparing two elements, we can compare integers instead of comparing strings, which is obviously uh, significantly faster. And in operations which uh, are string specific, for example, pattern matching, uh, these uh, integer codes are implicitly converted back to strings. 
also it is done when uh, results are printed. So they are printed just uh, in normal text form. Uh, IMCS is uh, optimized uh, to work with uh, time series. Usually, time series quer queries are not accessing just some individual elements. They are either processing the whole time series, either taking some range of elements. So one of the main goals of IMCS was to provide efficient way of extracting some intervals of elements from time series. This is most uh, simple form. It just extracts one simple element. Uh, this is more popular form, which uh, extracts a range of elements. It's also, it's, uh, in both this and these cases, uh, we use timestamp to select elements. It's also possible to select elements by position. Position is started from zero, so to extract first three elements, we specify till position equal to two. Position can be also negative. In this case, it is uh, calculated from the end of time series. So to get 10 last elements, we can specify from position as minus 10. Uh, and first uh, operand in all these cases is uh, identifier of time series. Uh, it's also possible to specify not just single identifier, but array of identifiers. In this case, elements from all these time series will be taken <coughs> together. Um, analytic queries are used to perform some aggregation of data. This is why MCS provides large number of dif different aggregate functions. First of all, it's uh, grand aggregates, which uh, calculate aggregates for the whole time series. Uh, group by aggregates uh, has two parameters, uh, two operands. First one is time series, which is actually aggregated. Uh, aggregated. Uh, and second operand specifies uh, group by time series. Elements of this time series with the same value are forming group. So this uh, query calculates maximal for each week if we do not consider origin of when week starts. Uh, grid aggregates are splitting time series in uh, same size, uh, fixed size intervals. And aggregate is uh, calculated for each um, interval. Moving uh, or window aggregates are also working with uh, fixed size intervals, but this window is moved. So number of elements in uh, result time series is the same as input time series. Hash aggregates are similar with, uh, what, uh, with how aggregation is done in SQL, in standard SQL. Uh, unlike a group by aggregates, it's uh, take into account all elements uh, from uh, time series, not just subsequent ones. And uh, finally, cumulative aggregates. In this case, uh, result depends on values of all preceding elements. Uh, these aggregates um, has uh, standard SQL analogs, but uh, IMCS also offers some aggregate specific for financial application. For example, this uh, query execute average true range indicator for two weeks. I do not want to explain this formula. It's quite complex. I just want to comment some operators used here. Uh, this is um, time series concatenation operations. It uh, takes elements from all one time series and uh, appends elements from second time series. Uh, this shift operator is used to cut elements from time series. By shifting time series one position left, we are cutting half element from time series. Max of uh, absolute value, it uh, seems to be obvious. Another example is calculation of relative strength index uh, indicator. Uh, here we are using 
CS window YAMA function, it stands for exponential moving average. It's uh, very popular for financial analysis. Um, so, IMCS requires additional memory. It uh, requires additional time for loading data. And um, pro <laughs> and also provides some special uh, set of functions, a special set of operators, which are, uh, it's not a separate language, but uh, um, in any case, syntax a little bit uh, different with standard SQL. Uh, the question is, why do we need all these things? Uh, and uh, the answer is uh, performance. The main answer is performance. So MCS is uh, from 10 till uh, 100 times faster than uh, correspondent standard SQL uh, queries. Actually, perform uh, ratio, performance ratio uh, depends on size of um, time series. For time series with uh, 1,000 elements, Increase of performance is about 10 times. Uh, and uh, if uh, size of time series is a million or more elements, then I get at my environment up to 100 improvement in speed. It is because of uh, in-memory only access. It's because of uh, compression. It's because of parallel execution of aggregates and the lack of uh, overhead uh, transaction, locking, and other overhead. Um, now I'm ready to answer your questions. You can also find information in the internet. Uh, this, uh, it's possible to download all this uh, extension here at GitHub. And uh, it's, uh, it can be used uh, with uh, most of recent Postgres versions, starting from 9.3, I'm tested. Um, it is uh, uh, not using some modern features like uh, dynamic uh, shared memory segments. And it requires uh, preloading of this extension uh, because it uh, needs to access to place data in Postgres shared memory. Uh, now I'm ready to answer the questions. CS, uh, all functions with CS underscore prefix are uh, IMCS functions. Uh, functions uh, with uh, uh, table name underscore is generated function. So these functions are generated by CS create. And these functions are, are just exist. Uh, yeah, I understood within Postgres, are they defined as a user defined function or are they defined as an IUS function? Uh, uh, the CS underscore sub is that a user defined function? Uh, yes, it's a uh, Postgres uh, user-defined function. It takes uh, time series type, so uh, argument of this function is uh, time series, uh, quarter is uh, time series. And uh, it's produce uh, uh, scalar value. No, no. Uh, um, argument has time series type. Time series is a uh, uh, compound user defined type provided by IMCS. It encapsulates access to time series. It actually contains no data. Um, I'm go back a little bit. Um, 
I think, here. Uh, so actually, most of uh, IMCS functions are not performing executions themselves. So when we call CSMAX, no executions, uh, execution is done. It just constructs uh, uh, element of a pipeline. And execution is started by uh, top-level functions. So in this case, where this uh, pipeline starts to work, and uh, data is uh, it's actually pulled. So some operator asks for tile from max operator. Max operator, in turn, is uh, loading data from uh, uh, iterators from, uh, for columnar story. And in this case, all this data is proceeded. Uh, Tile is uh, tile is hundred values, so uh, we we move uh, uh, multiple values between uh, each operator is processing multiple values. This is uh, the the main idea of vector processing. So here we find max among one hundred elements, and uh, this uh, max operator is implemented just as C loop which iterates through 100 elements and uh, find out maximum. The same is true for, for most of other IMCS operations. If we perform addition, we also have just plain loop in plane C, which uh, takes one vector, another vector, and uh, perform addition of its elements. This is why uh, C compiler is able to execute this code very efficiently, very efficient, in very efficient way. And we actually uh, pay no cost for uh, interpreting uh, uh, qu query. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, it's also moving. Uh, all operators are working with tiles. So input of tile operator is uh, B3 in which data is stored in uh, uh, columnar story. It just copy 100 elements from B3 page and uh, push it into the pipeline. So um, my question is kind of along similar lines, and I think you mostly answered it, but just to sort of uh, follow up on that a little bit. So you have a time series data type that effectively represents an automaton that runs against the time series data. And so that, that triple, triple vertical bar operator that's a time series concatenation, that, that is effectively operating on the automaton. And then once that's you've done all your operators, the actual execution uses it on your time series data. Yes. talked about inserting or updating, or I wasn't clear. You said you could insert additional data via triggers. Can you update the existing data or just insert? Uh, no, uh, uh, data can be only appended. Okay. And it, it, it has to be appended in a timestamp increasing order. So it's not okay. possible to insert in, inside. Okay. And what's the locking model on uh, It's a uh, multiple reader, single writer model for the whole time series. So it's possible to execute uh, several queries in parallel, which are uh, uh, performing queries. But uh, if we update time series, then it's not possible to, uh, to perform queries at this time. So every, every update blocks uh, yes. all readers and all uh, Yeah, yeah, writers. yeah. Okay. But it is not intended. Uh, it's in the, that data is actually will be added one element by element. It's uh, much more efficient to buffer data somewhere well, than uh, add. Give uh, the example of triggers. So that's <laughs> like triggers that would not be. Uh, yes, uh, I'm. I tested it, but uh, performance is certainly much worse uh, if we just uh, append data for the whole day, for example. Uh, 
Uh, sorry? The time series which are not time stamped by the date, so an integer or whatever. Uh, uh, a time stamp <laughs> is uh, it's not a, it has not to be a time. It's any identifier by which uh, data is. Uh, it can be unique ID, uh, sequence number, so. No, also I forgot to say that IMCS uh, about types uh, supported by IMCS. Right now, <laughs> all uh, scalar Postgres types, uh, uh, time, uh, data time, fl floating point type, uh, uh, strings certainly. Um, custom. No, uh, custom times are not supported because internally it's just uh, code in C, which uh, implements operat uh, these operations for the particular type. Yeah. This is uh, part of the functions to compare two vectors. Uh, yes. Yes. And how do you compare timestamps or uh, what? What's for example? Like I understand this. Closing price for of the particular comp for particular ticker. For example, if I would like uh, to compare a uh, price, a uh, daily price, which is like uh, uh, for IBM and for one of the index, for one of the index, is it possible to compare by day by day? It's like by by time stamp. Uh, IMCS provide as of join, so you can, uh, if you have uh, two different time series, you can uh, match uh, them by timestamp and compare. So you can compare price for IBM for some day and price, for, for example, for ABB for the, the same day. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure if I answer your question. <laughs> Uh, if you want to compare, uh, uh, here th there is some example. Uh, there is uh, a diff, opera uh, diff operator which uh, subtract uh, elements, uh, two subsequent elements, so it produces pairs of differences. And uh, in this case, uh, you can uh, actually, uh, this uh, indicator is. Uh, Evaluating dynamic of the price and the, it's using this CSD operator. So, if you have more than one column in your column uh, store, how does it, like, with, on that quote get ABB, how does it know which, does it search all of the, all of the columns for ABB value if you have more than one column? If, if, if what? Totally. So, uh, five columns, you mean, uh, for example, low, high, close is a uh, column, names of the columns. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Certainly, it's uh, uh, here you are using uh, different, uh, here not, uh, but the, here it's using different columns from. ABB is just identifier of uh, uh, the time series. It's, uh, time se it's not necessary to have uh, the time series identifier, for example, it's possible to place uh, all data in the single time series, and uh, in this case, symbol name will can be treated as any other attribute. But usually in financial applications, data analysis is performed for some particular symbol. So we need to find average price for particular company, not uh, average price for the whole day for all companies. Any other questions? Uh, is it possible to use the standard two quarter query to uh, to table with data? Uh, to do it, it's necessary to implement uh, to change Postgres uh, parser executor to support no, not parser but uh, executor to 
uh, map uh, standard SQL uh, expressions to these operations. Also, uh, some operations has no analog in SQL. For example, uh, uh, I, uh, for example, I'm not sure how you will cumulate if uh, we will do uh, implement a uh, right qu query which implements cumulative aggregate in standard SQL and uh, try to implement such kind uh, of uh, query in standard SQL. It's uh, uh, not, not trivial. <laughs> Certainly, it's uh, possible to use views. Uh, uh, th this is why uh, um, we actually can use views uh, at this stage uh, when we create generate functions. So, Quartic, uh, it can you can use uh, view here instead of a table and uh, combine result from. Uh, different Postgres tables and also perform some grouping or preprocessing uh, of uh, data which uh, has to be imported in uh, columnar store. And the uh, results of IMCS queries can be, uh, if, you use, if you project them to horizontal representation, then you ju ju just get normal set of tuples which can be manipulated in standard way. And if no projection is performed, then the uh, result is uh, just a uh, set of uh, time series. Uh, and, uh, you can, at least you can print them. You can uh, copy from one computer to another. And Any other question? No, I didn't try it yet. Actually, uh, I'm, uh, I implemented it not so much time ago. And um, what I'm kind of currently need at this moment, I want to receive some feedback, understand uh, how it can be used, how it can be improved, how uh, I need some real data sets because I'm testing at some data I have. But uh, this system is um, will be useful uh, for very large data for small data sets, Postgres is fast enough. So you need to perform some kind of some analytic on very large volumes, terabyte volumes. Uh, this is why uh, I'm very interested in some feedbacks, comments, ch change requests, and so, so on. Any more questions? Why, why I have created this? Um, <laughs> it's a difficult question to answer shortly. <laughs> Short answer is it was interesting for me. <laughs> More complex answer, I have some kind of uh, job offer, and I just w try to illustrate what kind of things I can do. And, uh, <laughs> Actually, it was my third attempt uh, to add time series to Postgres. First was based on using arrays or just uh, byte here to store parts of time series. But unfortunately, performance was uh, much worse uh, comparing just with uh, standard way of uh, storing elements. 
And uh, this is why I decided to bypass most of Postgres uh, storage mechanism and uh, implement alternative in, me in memory alternative for them. Uh, no, I have not uh, compared it yet with uh, some uh, other C store, but the main uh, the main difference here uh, certainly my first uh, intention was uh, to uh, uh, my first intention was uh, to uh, implement uh, columnar storage just as foreign data wrapper. In this case, we can address this issue. Uh, and uh, uh, also we can uh, reduce data set uh, by fetching only those columns which are needed for query execution. But uh, we cannot provide parallel execution and uh, we cannot uh, uh, provide um, vector operations. So if we execute qu uh, query using standard SQL uh, engine, uh, we can never achieve uh, uh, such high performance when we are using vector operations. This is why I'm thinking that uh, using forward data wrappers is not best approach for column store. Sorry, don't we'll, use, we'll use all the shared buffers. Um, obviously, it's using the shared buffers. How, how do you control it to not use all the shared buffers? Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm not using shared buffers. So okay. Postgres, uh, I'm uh, using my own memory. Oh. In configuration file, I specify a size of uh, memory which can be used by MCS storage. And uh, it's completely independent with uh, Postgres. I guess the, the, for, to change this question around then, what happens when you run out of memory in that amount that you balance? Yeah. The, the answer is obvious, <laughs> you get an error. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess does, it, does it crash it or does it just, just an error on that execution? Yes, uh, it's ju just return an error. So actually one of the problem I have, so I'm spent uh, some a significant amount of time to solve is error reporting in case of uh, using parallel threads. So if error happen in parallel thread, I, can, I should catch it and uh, then propagate to the main right. executor. And, uh, Have you taken a look yet at uh, getting rid of the <coughs> entries in this thing? Like if you're appending only at one end, to look at getting rid of the early stuff and kind of throwing that away to, to get more space back? Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's probably where you're going with this eventually. Any more questions? <laughs>